Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. How are you? Oh, amazing. Thank you for having me. Um, maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to this amazing documentary. What can people expect when they watch it? I think, honestly, from what I hear, I, um, I think people expect the opposite of what they were expecting. I think people experienced the opposite of what they expected. I, this is not your quintessential LGBT, queer, transgender narrative. Like, you know, it's it's quite intimate and a very provocative in terms of just like really talking straight to the truth and from the truth. Um, and a lot of the, you know, the taboos that have been created around transgenderism, they don't ex ex uh, exist in this film. Um, also, most importantly, uh, men are not being villainized or Black women aren't being villainized. I think that there's a, a, a entertainment element to this that makes it also more enjoyable or easier to kind of like, you know, take in all of the information. Mm -hmm. I see. I mean, yeah, watching it, exactly as you said, it just felt like something I hadn't watched before, both in kind of the the form and the tone and, and also, you know, the subject matter. Um, maybe you can talk us through a little bit about how it came about. And I know you sort of had quite a personal journey yourself to come to, to this film being made, you know, back from when you were working in music and then, you know, the, the, the challenges you faced and even getting this film made. Um, so what's that journey been like for you? Um, yeah, I mean, my own adversity kind of gotten me to this triumphant moment, you know, it's like kind of like a Cinderella story, if you will, by, you know, uh, me coming out as transgender in 2014, after producing for artists like the likes of Andre 3000, Lil Wayne, Carrie, uh, Carrie Hilson, Katy Perry, you know, all of that went out of the window, the credibility, the, you know, everything just kind of like was thrown away, you know, and I felt really uh, pushed aside, uh, unseen, unsafe, unprotected, you know, I just, uh, you know, lost a lot of, uh, relationships in the industry. So, you know, that really led me to kind of like be, uh, creative on how to get back on my feet after years and years and years of sleeping on floors and sofas and, uh, people's cars, you know, um, but it was a reality check. It really goes to show no matter what you accomplish as a person or as, even as a transgender person, no matter what, people are always going to just discredit you and chop you down to just being uh, a trans person. And um, so I wanted to do this film to really empower myself and empower the women and trans women and queer people all over the world and also empower Black women to inform them the realities of you know the experiences that transgender women have with Black men. Um, and, and, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it could be a hard discussion sometimes to have, but we have, we have no choice. We have to do this. We, our backs are against the wall. Our community is divided and separated and fighting. And, um, um, you know, there's a lot of things that keep my community, um, you know, uh, behind and, and, uh, divided, but this is just one that I thought I could possibly bring to the table to kind of help move the narrative uh, move the needle forward on us healing and coming together. And maybe you can talk us through a bit about the making of it, because I know you approached different directors and weren't able to get anyone on board. So, you know, picked up that camera yourself. Um, and and you can really tell the sort of relationship you managed to build with your subjects. You know, it feels so unfiltered and, and so candid. Um, so how did you kind of meet them, discover them, and work with them to kind of capture their stories in this amazing way? Yeah. Um, well, I met them by, I didn't know any of the girls um, in the film, never met them. I found them online, like either YouTube, like Daniela was doing this like little YouTube thing. And um, and uh, I was so obsessed with the way that she was talking and how candid and open she was. I just was drawn to it. Um, and, uh, some of the other girls, I went like to like some of the celebrity trans girls and I went through their, uh, comments and found some of the girls that way, you know, and then it would lead to another girl and things like that. So I did the work, but it also didn't feel like work. It was just like a, this intrepid, um, journey, you know, just of discovery and possibilities and opportunity that I was creating for myself and for, uh, the girls. So, uh, you know that experience was just a part of the 
healing process for me to do this film. Mm. And maybe you can talk a bit about the the look and feel of it, though, as well, because, um, you know, despite it in some ways seeming very kind of stripped back, there's also quite like a stylized element to it, the fact that it's in black and white, um, you know, the way you're kind of capturing their stories, but also, you know, really focusing in on their bodies as well and making that, you know, really showing the beauty of their bodies um, and perhaps, you know, testament to your background in music, the soundtrack. It's absolutely amazing too. So maybe we can talk about how you use those elements to, to, to give us that finished product. Well, again, this movie really empowered me, you know, um, by way of, you know, me not having opportunity musically as much as I had years prior, right? It's like, how, how do I continue to be uh, a musician um, and a producer without having to, you know, sacrifice my integrity, you know, by begging and pleading and asking and proving and over and over and over and over and over that I'm worthy of the space that I take up in this world. You know, how do I do that? Um, and there was no other way for me to do that, but then create my own situation. And creating this movie allowed me to say, you know what? I don't have to ask anyone's permission of what song I'm using. I have so many songs that didn't you know, get placed or get didn't get sold for years. And I, I just, it was just, I mean, imagine the endless possibilities that was just given to me just by creating this film um, creatively, you know, um, with anyone that's in my situation. I just think it's just, it's a reset button for for your life, honestly. I do think, that, you know, the thing that really stands out is kind of the tone of it as well. So like even in that first anecdote mm. talking about something that was like really scary, but then, you know, it turns into like a funny story at the same time. And that's like a thread that seems to run throughout the whole thing. You know, yeah. there's so much wit and humor and fearlessness that also goes hand in hand with talking about you know, the challenges these these people have had to face um, and, and the fear that they've had to face. So this, those two things kind of uh, put into contrast. Um, was that something really important for you to capture? Look, there's an old saying here, opposites attract, right? It, it works visually, it works audibly. Like I like to do, I have a very eclectic type of style to the way I create, whether it's music or visuals or, um, you know, I sew clothes a little bit. So even with that, you know, Sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't because people, it's hard for people to follow things that are unorthodox, you know, and it's, it's, we're programmed to know that this is what happens. This is what da da da. But me not having people in my ear or emailing me or calling me saying, Hey, I don't know. You should think about this or, Hey, this politician might like this or, you know, Donald Trump, this or Biden, that I, I me not having to deal with any of that. I was just an absolute free spirit to create. And I wanted to do things that were un unexpected, you know, especially when it came, comes to the transgender story, it's just so underwhelming and corny when we are, when our stories are being told, because it's just, sometimes it's a downer. Sometimes me personally is things that I've heard so much over and over and over and over. So I wanted to create an opportunity that just kind of like refreshes the story and our voices, you know, to kind of get people's attention. Mm. And seeing the response to your film, I mean, you know, in fact, it's been at Sundance, it's been at uh, Berlin and it's, you know, had a phenomenal response there. And now obviously getting released in the UK. What, what does that kind of tell you? Does that feel very validating that people are really able to connect to your film um and you know what does it mean to you to have audiences you know particularly here in the UK being able to see your film I think um I'm learning I've known this already but what's most validating is really truly how powerful being authentic and um truthful is I, I think with all of the marvels and the barbies and the, the people really just also want to be able to turn that off and see real people no matter what walk of life they're in it's very important for us as humans to always kind of keep in contact with each other you know an occasional hello or hope you're well in this digital world in the world of ai like it's it's i think uh and, and on top of that you know there's also a lot of journey and political unrest with so many communities all over the world and you know, this kind of cuts through because, yeah, it's a, it's a fresher take, but it's also a very intimate, 
uh, really transparent uh, way to tell their stories. This, this story has been told for years and years and years. And I, I think, you know, um, the way that they were so open and uh, uh, transparent really kind of like gotten a lot of uh, eyebrows raised. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, just finally, you know, it does feel like, you know, whether in the US, whether in the UK, whether elsewhere, we are sort of regressing in terms of acceptance and, mm -hmm. and rights that are around like trans people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why do you think that is? And do you feel positivity for the future? Does it just feel like, you know, if you go back to when it used to be gay and lesbian rights, you know, is it just the next frontier or is there something else going on? Why is this issue such a lightning rod it feels for the culture wars that we're having right now? Yeah. Um, I will, I will say this. I am extremely optimistic. I am. I, I know that there are a lot of tensions rising, but how do I say this? If, if you could follow these laws and these, um, you know, kind of like dictatorships that are being put up, uh, you know, against queer people, uh, black people, trans people, uh, women, you know, they're coming from very little people. They're coming from, they're not coming from the majority of the world. They're coming from men that have personal issues with women, personal issues with gay people. It's very, it's almost like the Wizard of Oz. And I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but the whole time you just imagine this was a massive being that we're going to see the Wizard of Oz because there's such a journey to get to this person. And you finally find the Wizard of Oz and it's just the most squimish, you know, guy that created this facade. He's hiding behind his powers and his abilities. It, to me, like there are real issues like in the world, I, 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 that is true, but it is a lot smaller than, than what it feels like. I, I not, I'm not uh, discrediting or trivializing the severities that we're going through, but what I'm saying is that if we learn to, to really stick together, like really just who's ever involved, whoever's with us, if we just learn to not fight amongst each other and support each other and be consistent and keep in touch and hold hands and really fight with, with one another. Um, um, I think that, you know, we could kind of face this a lot better rather than focusing on who's against us. If we could turn the camera and say, but this is who like, who love us. This is who love us. This is who supports us. This is who stands up for us. This is, if we could do that and really just kind of like turn it, turn the tables and say, we actually have more support than the media or politicians are trying to make it seem like we don't. Um, uh, um, it's bad. In a, we're in a bad time, but I also think we're on the precipice of really changing and shifting the culture and shifting our ability to really uh, uh, gain our uh, independence and gain our safeties and, um, in, and equality. So yeah, we do have real issues, but we do also have real opportunity to thrive. I am not scared of any of these laws. I'm not afraid of any politician. I'm not afraid of any man or woman that you know, think I don't belong here. That's just me. Not everyone is able to do that, but it is my duty to create um, stories and and uh, platforms to to show the uh, the the powers that we have. Amazing. Well, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for sharing all that with me. And I really can't wait for everyone else to see Kokoma City here in the UK. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for having me. So lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. See you. Bye. Bye.